Ayrton Senna is well known for his unbelievable world-beating years at McLaren, winning three championships before making his final move to Williams. I can't help but think that not enough attention is paid to his years racing for Lotus. After his famous second place in the 1984 Monaco Grand Prix, he made the move to the Heffel-based outfit for the 1985 season. First of all, let's take a moment to admire this car. With the black John Player livery and the beastly turbo engine. I mean, come on, it's so sick. Anyway, Senna wasted no time establishing himself, getting his first win at the 1985 Portuguese Grand Prix, a major milestone in his storied career. He won by over a minute in wet conditions lapping everyone but the second place, Michele Alboreto. You've demonstrated an enormous amount of tactical ability today. You were thinking your way all through the race, were you? Yes, of course. It was a hard tactical race, corner by corner, lap by lap, because conditions were changing all the time, even corner by corner. Uh, brake problems because the carbon disc brakes give some trouble in wet conditions but apart from that the car was marvelous the team have provided me with a fantastic car and I'm very very grateful for that. He was soon working the team in his favor against his teammate Elio De Angelis. This was no easy feat considering that De Angelis was himself a good racer. Senna felt some growing pains with a series of retirements via his own mistakes or reliability issues. Out of his car as he was challenging Alvarello sucked him right in here. He goes down the inside to give him room on the outside, knowing full well that he can't go on the outside. He gets on the marbles right there, and whack. He, however, pulled it together to get some important podiums and a win at the 1985 Belgian Grand Prix. In the end, Senna finished fourth, which, if you quantify it this way, makes him the fourth best driver of that year, finishing behind Lane Prost, that year's winner, as well as Alvarello, Rosberg, and above such F1 luminaries as Nigel Mansell, Nelson Piquet, and Nicky Lauda, the previous year's champion. After the season was over, he was successful in chasing DeAngelis from the team to get number one driver status. Um, I had to move because there was no place for two people of uh, such a speed, if you want to call it, such a character. Uh, uh, Lotus just could not uh, give us the same material all the time. He even blocked fellow up-and-coming driver Derek Warwick from being signed by the Lotus outfit in favor of the Scot, Johnny Dumfries. Senna later commented that this move soured a previous good relationship he had had with Warwick. But as Senna fans know, this behavior only became more pronounced as the years went on. In 1986, he set about establishing himself as one of the top drivers in the sport. He started the season well with a second place in his home Grand Prix which it would take him another six years to win, including a refusal to yield to Mansell during a turn on the first lap, causing Mansell to go off. Another classic characteristic of Senna, his desire to force a crash rather than give up a position. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That, I think I couldn't see what happened to Mansell. I think the same thing has happened to Mansell as happened last year because Mansell went off very early in the race in 1985. Let's have a look. Touching wheels with Ayrton Senna as they go around the left-hander and Mansell certainly spun, so up into second position. It's now Piquet. Mansell appears to be out of the race as we look down on this replay. You see him spin onto the grass, into the Armco. You didn't actually see him hit the Armco, but he certainly did. So Senna leads, PK second, is up into The next race in Spain was a difficult battle between Senna, Prost, and Mansell, with Senna coming out on top by a car length, making it one of the closest finishes in F1 history. Drive by both of them with Alain Prost in 
Following retirement, Senna took a third place at Monaco, I'm sure, continuing his obsession with winning it. Interestingly, this was the last race for his former teammate DeAngelis, who was killed testing for the upcoming Belgian Grand Prix. Senna managed second place, but his results put him into the lead of the championship, as leader Prost had only finished sixth. Senna then took his fourth victory later in the year at Detroit. Despite messing up a gear change and losing his lead, Senna was able to claw back and win, passing Mansell on the twisting circuit. Yes, and having just said that uh, McLaren seems to be losing form, I may well be wrong here. The teams in Detroit have been understandably pretty reticent to discuss what tires they're running because Andago Senna punches past Mansell in a very clever little maneuver. He took Nigel pretty much by surprise, or by the time Nigel realized what was happening, it was too late. Senna was alongside him, and uh, Senna jumps through into the lead. After his win, a fan handed him a Brazilian flag, which he proudly held out of the car on his victory lap, a tradition he would continue every time he won for the rest of his career. But Ayrton Senna has won a magnificent victory. There is uh, David Hill, and in third position, it's Michael Schumacher ahead of Johnny Herbert in the Lotus. So McLaren wins. The young Brazilian was certainly making a name for himself. The rest of the season was a mixed bag of podium finishes and then frustrating retirements. However, Senna was able to acquire an astonishing eight pole positions from only his third year in F1. The second to last race in Portugal produced one of the most famous F1 pictures of all time. Bernie Eccleston engineered the famed photo on the pit wall of Senna, Mansell, Prost, and Piquet, all smiling, the cream of the crop, the best drivers in F1 at the time, known collectively as the Gang of Four. Between them, when all the dust settled, there would be 11 World Driver Championships. Unfortunately, Senna was not able to repeat his previous year's victory in Portugal, but he once again ended the season in fourth place. He added two victories and six podiums to his tally. Additionally, aside from retirements, he never finished outside the top five. His legend was certainly gaining in strength as he went into the 1987 season. The Lotus team saw a shakeup in sponsorship taking on Camel and a new bright yellow livery, which I would also like to add is so cool. I mean, come on, just take a look at that car. The team also took on a new engine manufacturer in Honda and a Japanese driver to partner Senna, Satori Nekajima. It was said that Senna's experience in 1987 working with the Japanese Honda team helped to cement his later working relationship with them at McLaren. After mixed results, Ayrton took his first Monaco victory and a commanding one at that, finishing more than 30 seconds in front of Nelson Piquet. Yeah, probably looks like from the outside, but was not from the inside. Very hard work. Yes, Monaco, it's together with Detroit, the hardest race during the year. And uh, whatever it is, whichever position you are, whichever whichever car you have, it's always very hard. Um, it was easier to win this year than be third last year, because the car was much better this year than last year. Last year was terrible. This was followed by victory at the U.S. Grand Prix in Detroit which was fast turning into one of his favorite circuits. Again, however, his combustible personality and desire to win won him some enemies as well. This certainly cemented another chapter in the long-standing rivalry between Mansell and Senna. By the time the 1987 season finished, Senna had two victories and five podiums to his name. He finished third in the driver standings, his best world driver championship finish so far in his career. Senna, however, had already decided he didn't like his chances at Lotus, and at the Italian Grand Prix had announced he would be joining McLaren for the 1988 season. We expected it all to happen at Monza, and it has. And most of it is to do with McLaren. In a major policy statement, McLaren have confirmed, first of all, that Ayrton Senna is joining Alain Prost as their second driver in 1988. And they've also confirmed that from next season onwards, they'll be using Honda engines. Now, in it was said on recommendation from Elaine Prost, which, as we all know, went on to produce one of the most bitter rivalries in sporting history. Senna's subsequent years at McLaren and Williams are the well-known stuff of legend and are well documented. I have always felt his time at Lotus was lesser known and I felt deserved a closer look. Everyone loves the times when Senna dominated with a superior car, not to take anything away from his achievements but I always found it fascinating to see him coming up and racing with slightly lesser equipment but still showing his raw talent and fighting to get noticed. A Grand Prix 
racing phenomenon. His target is Nelson Piquet's time of 1 minute 7.063. 1 minute 7.063. Ayrton Senna has achieved, as I said earlier on, 12 pole positions in a very short Grand Prix career, which started in 1984 with the then Tolman team, from which he departed in controversial circumstances to join Lotus in 1985, and my goodness, he's tried.